and welcome to Ready, Set, Jets. Every week we take a deep dive into the most recent Jets press conferences and analyze every word, every pause, every hidden message. And for that, we turn to a 10-year NFL vet, former Jets quarterback, and analyst on Jets Late Night, Jay Fiedler. Man, after a long losing streak, the Jets get back into the winning ways, and it's, it's really going to be fun to see how they respond to questions after a win as opposed to just what seemingly has been like them <laughs> deflecting after all of these losses. So Zach Wilson obviously took the first big step towards redemption. He had a 300-yard game here in the AFC Offensive Player of the Week but now can he repeat it? Coach Sala was asked what Zach's biggest challenge is after that performance. It's wash, rinse, repeat. You know, it's continue to have confidence in your ability, confidence in your teammates, confidence in your coaches, um, and confidence that uh, that you have, that he has the ability to take a game over um, when when he's when he's clicking. So um, you could say challenge, but um, for in my mind, it's more just have that continued confidence and swag and just play with that that letter rip mentality. All right, let's try to read between the lines here because it seemed like he didn't like the word challenge. Maybe opportunity is a better angle. I mean, do you get the sense that the coach is using positive reinforcement to get the most out of Zach? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you don't want to take a, a win and, and and a step forward as as a step back, as a challenge. So, uh, you know, I think uh, Coach Sal was kind of flipping the words on, on the question there a little bit to, uh, you know, put a positive spin on it. Uh, you know, but again, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, Zach has, has shown this ability before, you know, although this is probably his best game of his career, he's had some pretty good games, uh, you know, over the past couple of years. His biggest problem has been putting those games together back to back and, and showing some consistency week in and week out. Uh, and I think that's going to be his biggest challenge going forward. Yeah, a challenge, but it's also an opportunity that sits in front of him with just Absolutely. a few games left to go in the season. And what's in front of him is a chance to hold on to this spot or at the very least give himself a great opportunity to move forward with either the Jets or another NFL team. All right, we are back to hear more from Zach himself and hear his mentality as he's heading into the Dolphins game. This is Ready, Set, Jets. All right, so Zach Wilson had a breakout game last week, so can he sustain it? He's had good games before. He's been benched. He has come back. But has he finally found that special sauce? He was asked if he thinks he's going to have the same mojo. That's the standard, right? I wouldn't say, hey, you know, in that game, you were doing anything differently. I mean, we were, we were in the flow. We were doing we, – momentum was on our side. You know, when good things happen, then it snowballs in the right direction. I wouldn't say it was, you know, wow, that was different than normal. Of course, it has been this year, but that's our standard. That's what we expect to have. And so, you know, let's not overthink it as an offense. Let's go out there and just play ball and do the same thing. Jay, let's be honest. I mean, this man has been put through the ringer since joining the Jets. He has yes. been the punching bag. He has finally punched back. So he says – Let's not overthink it. So when you have a great game, what's the proper approach to the following week after that? Well, look, I, I think, you know, you got to look at what are the reasons why you had a great game. And, uh, uh, you know, I think Zach is trying to just play it off as, you know, I'm doing everything I've always been doing and uh, things just kind of fell into place uh, for us uh, this past week. But, uh, you know, what I saw in the game was, was some difference. And, uh, you know, whether that was a result of, of him sitting out and maybe, you know, being on the sideline, uh, uh, tapping into Aaron Rodgers and, and his way of thinking, uh, throughout a game, uh, or, you know, just kind of getting things, uh, uh, you know, going a little bit, uh, a little bit quicker in his mind. I thought his decision making was a lot faster. I thought his, uh, uh, he, he was in command of the game, pre snap reads, uh, getting the team into the right plays. And uh, and he was on time with his throws, which is something that he's struggled with in the past. So, you know, he's got to re he's got to uh, reboot that into his into his mindset and make sure that his quick decision making that he had last week continues and carries over into into the next uh, month of play. I think you brought up a great point because this was his first start in a couple of weeks after being benched. It's not a scenario he wanted to happen, but he is dealing with it. So listen to his response when he was asked if the two weeks off did anything positive for him. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, obviously, 
you could sit there and say watching helps, but I don't, I mean, playing helps more. <laughs> I mean, sitting there watching, I don't know if you're going to get as much out of that, but I feel, I feel like, uh, you know, coming back in there and, and just letting it rip is, is probably the biggest part. What, that does not sound like a guy who was ready to quit, as one of his teammates reportedly said. His role this season was always to sit, watch, learn, develop. So how big of a role does centering yourself play, or is it more important to go out there, face the issues, and then fight your way through the mess? Well, yeah, I mean, there, there's no uh, there, there's no substitute for experience on the field. So, uh, you know, he is right in that uh, in that respect. You, know, you you learn a heck of a lot more when you're standing behind center and you could, you know, see the, the, the bullets firing at you and, and, and react to it. Uh, and, and then, you know, go back to the film and kind of recall those, uh, you know, visuals that you saw in the game. Uh, and analyze that and, and regroup for the next week. Uh, you know, standing on the sidelines a different perspective. Uh, you know, you don't see the you, you don't see the game the same way, but sometimes you could see a little bit more from the sidelines as you see a you know a full picture. You see a different perspective of it. Uh, you know, like I said uh, just before, I think you know having Aaron Rodgers in his ear and having uh, uh, you know his his way of thinking and his, his way of looking at the game. You know, in your ear as the game's going on. You know whether that happened that way or not on the sideline. I don't know, but uh, you know, if I was Zach Wilson over the last couple of weeks and Aaron was back on the sidelines with us, uh, I'd be right next to him and and talking with him through every single play. I mean. It's almost like you could see a little bit of Aaron Rodgers in him and just the way that he was making those off-scheduled plays work, throwing the ball sidearm, flicking the wrist, um, and just showing that confidence to throw the ball into tight places that he wasn't throwing the ball before or he would throw the ball behind or maybe taking a, a second step. But I will take, I will say this, man. You get hit a number of times, that's going to create core memories that will be tough for you to kind of shake free from. So maybe just a little time for him to center himself to kind of find that balance has found, uh, you know, helpful. It found He's hopefully found a little bit helpful this year. We are back to talk specifically about this trip to Miami and what factor could turn out to be a big issue. This is Ready, Set, Jets. All right, the Jets are in Miami this week where Tyreek Hill could be an issue if not for his ankle, but so will the heat become an issue. Game time weather is expected to be near 80 degrees and sunny. So when Quincy Williams was asked about the challenge of Miami, listen to what he starts with. But number one thing is that we're going to Miami this time, so the weather's a uh, factor in that also, so just making sure we're hydrated. Um, a lot of soft tissues issues happen with uh, not being hydrated in the sun and stuff like that. So number one is like making sure our body's together. And then the next thing is um, stopping their perimeter run and just uh, slowing them down any type of way we can, population to the ball. And then uh, the biggest thing to stop speed is uh, force, so like hitting them hard, letting them get up slow. Okay, I like that. Hit him hard, let him get up slow. Uh, but, right. but, but the idea is he really does focus on the heat. I mean, he probably talked for 20 seconds about the heat. So this is a stadium that is specifically engineered. So the visitor sidelines is in direct sunlight while the Dolphins are in the shade. So you played there for five seasons. How big of a factor is heat? Uh, it, it certainly can be a factor, and uh, especially this late in the year, as as uh, cold weather teams, you know, get into their 30s and 20s uh, uh, in, in their home practice uh, facilities, uh, you know, coming down, and it's going to be almost 80 degrees uh, this Sunday, and you're standing in the sun uh, on the sideline, and it's beating down on you, and you you get the humidity of of Miami. It does wear on you. The the, the good thing for the New York Jets. Uh, especially on the defensive side is the guys who usually tire out the most of the defensive linemen, and especially when you get an outside running game like Miami does, uh, you know, they're the ones who, who, who are the most affected and uh, they're built to have, uh, you know, a lot of players in and out. So they've been doing it all season long. Uh, they, they, they carry extra defensive linemen. So, you know, I think you're going to see a big rotation of defensive linemen, even more so than usual for the New York Jets. If Tyreek Hill doesn't play in this game, is that a, a li even not, not, not more of a challenge, but does it present a different challenge because McDaniel's scheme hasn't been shown on tape yet? 
Well, I think his his scheme is uh, you know week to week shows something different anyway. Uh, whether Tariq's uh, in the game or, or not, uh, you know they're one of the most creative offenses out there, and uh, <laughs> and they do have some other weapons other than Tariq Hill. Uh, certainly, their running backs uh, uh, are a key for him. And Quincy, uh, you know, mentioned that with the outside run game, uh, you know. But uh, like he said, uh, they face some trouble against some physical teams, and uh, you know they they've uh, had. Their issues uh, against teams that have good pass rush that yeah. could get to to Tua quickly and teams that could stop the run. So, uh, you know, the Jets I think have the defense that's built for them. Uh, you know, the, the the issue now is, you know, can the offense do the, have the same production that they had last week in the second half? Because they're still going to have to put some points up. As much as you want to slow down Miami, they're still going to they're still going to score what? with or without Tariq Hill. Uh, so, you know, you, you still need to get, uh, you know, at least 20 points up on the board. Well, at least we've seen the Jets team put those kind of points up on the board. And I love what he said. You meet speed with force. The Jets and the Dolphins play Sunday at one in Miami. You can see that game on CBS, two, And of course, Jay will be with me in studio to break it down on Jets late night. Otis Livingston will be on the sidelines with the players. Jets late night, Sunday night after the late news. We, of course, will be here to break down all the hidden meanings of the press conferences every week on Ready, Set, Jets. For Jay Fiedler, I'm Steve Overmeyer. See you next week.